How you doing? <laughs> so, <clears throat> today's theme is manifesting your reality, but in such a way that it does not become driven purely by the personality construct. And I would love for you all to see and realize and experience how actually those are not two contradicting flows. So by those two flows, I mean the personality structure is actually caused by not effortlessly creating a reality, not being in your flow, not being in your joy, not being free. So it may seem that manifesting your reality is a statement of egotism, a statement of, of assertion and the personality being at work. But really, the personality is only at work in the first place. It's only rigid. It's only solid in the first place because we've not given it what it desires, in a sense. And by it, I don't really actually refer to the personality structure. I refer to you, you as a being, you as an inseparable, plugged-in portion of creation. You need Jews. You need flow. You need <clears throat> love. You need appreciation. You need to appreciate your existence and the uniqueness that comes with that. And the uniqueness that comes with that is in the form of desire, it's in the form of passion, the form of inspiration, the form of being psyched, being stoked, being excited. That is the juice that connects you, that makes you actually person transcendent rather than person based. So let's start at the basis, at the beginning, in a sense. The beginning being the start of your personality structure. And when I refer to a personality structure, I mean one optional personality structure. Out of many. That one personality structure became yours, in other words, became rigid, became tight, became solid, became who you were, who you identified with precisely because you never learned to offer it the juice of life, to plug it in to all that is. And the way to plug that personality construct in to all that is, is through that joy, it is through that inspiration, it is through that passion that then naturally creates your life, creates or manifests your reality. So when we deprive who we are from being plugged in to the main line, so to speak, plugged into all that is, the motherboard that connects everything that exists. And again, being plugged in feels like being turned on, being excited, being in joy, being in peace, being in love, being in appreciation, being in gratitude, being in bliss, being in ecstasy, being inspired, being turned on. When we deprive ourselves from that, also when we deprive ourselves from that out of the idea that it's egotistical to plug ourselves into joy, into freedom, into bliss, into expansion, into creation. When we deprive ourselves from being plugged in, that's when the substitute mind kicks in, the substitute servant, which some call the ego. But substitute servant will do. It substitutes for it's a substitute for you not serving, you not vibrationally, consciously taking care of your flow, of being plugged in as often as you can be. And so when you learn to not plug yourself into the motherboard of all that is, that connects you to the best interests of all beings connected, when you are unplugged, that's when, in that sense, shit hits the fan, when it becomes messy, when the unplugged personality, the personality structure that you're most familiar with, the moment you unplug yourself, that's sort of what lingers as a ghost that is unconnected to all that is, unconnected to its higher self. Cut off from the juice, and then what, was, what does it want to do? It wants to gather that juice from wherever it can, on its own autonomous, seemingly autonomous, unconscious, automatic, conditioned basis. 
And so it's a personality construct overly identified with and um, in that sense reckless, needy, believing it has lack. And it does in that sense because we're depriving it of being tapped into the motherboard of all that is. Does that make sense so far? Yes. Okay. Does that experience, is that experience clear to you in your own life? Can you see that in your past, in your present perhaps? So all kinds of funny ideas start to exist when you live in a society where everyone learns to unplug themselves. So you get all these ghosts, all these personality constructs, interacting with each other based on lack, reinforcing in each other that lack is the truth of reality, when it's the only thing that can never be, out of everything that can be, it's the only thing that can never exist, but everyone believes it's the reality, the nature of reality. And so you get these very funny, dysfunctional relationships and experiences. And you start to wish for other people that they don't pluck themselves in. And other people start to wish for you that you don't pluck yourself in. Because when you do, it's sinful. When you do, it's egotistical. When you do, it's arrogant. When you do, it's not spiritual, etc. When you do, you're not obeying your parents. When you do, you're not obeying your religion. When you do, you're free. And being free is dangerous, no? It's very dangerous. It's dangerous to all those that are not plugged in either, seemingly, or that don't know that they are plugged in. And so again, this is a very dysfunctionally, mutually reinforcing way of living as a society that we've done for quite some time. And now it's time to plug ourselves back in. And you cannot plug anyone else back in. You have to plug yourself back in. The only way you can teach others to plug themselves back in is by plugging yourself back in. And when you plug yourself back into the motherboard, your, what's the word, diode, like a little lamp, starts shining. And so it attracts a lot of attention. Wanted or unwanted, doesn't really matter. Whomsoever has something to learn from you will be attracted to that light, like a moth to the flame. They will have something to say about you or think about you, which then reflects back upon their own not being plugged in. But that's a good thing. That's the only way we can plug back in this entire collective is by starting with yourself and shining as brightly as you can, as freely, as independently, as clearly as you can, as lovingly as you can, so that others have a chance to see that it is a possibility and that it's actually personality transcendent when you do. Because when you're plugged in to that juice, to that motherboard, which knows all that is, which is connected to all that is, you are in tune, you are in alignment and your actions have a natural flow to them and the way your circumstances move about have a natural flow to them. And that flow <clears throat> is in alignment with all that is. You don't have to think about that. But the very fact that something is inspirational to you makes you feel whole, complete, loved and loving, excited, turned on. And if you honor basic sort of human integrity, if you will, if you respect other people's free will, then your actions will naturally be in flow, will naturally be in alignment with that. And they'll naturally attract attention, which is the way to share this word, this love, this freedom. It's the way to show, it's the way to teach. The only way to teach is to shine, is to plug yourself in. And again, when you do that, you become more than just that personality structure. Whereas if you're unplugged, then all you know is this little thing rattling around inside your computer, disconnected from the motherboard. But when it's connected, now it functions as a whole computer, as a whole system of different processes happening. Does that make sense? In other words, to be plugged in is not selfish. To be plugged in is not egotistical. We have to get out of that mindset collectively. We have to be willing to get out of that sin-based mindset altogether. We have to be willing to grant other people 
their highest joy, their highest desire, their highest freedom, and to respect that. Because when we do, we also give ourselves permission to, and vice versa. We need to give ourselves that permission. And when we do, we'll naturally understand how this mechanism works, and we wouldn't want any other, any other person, person to not be connected. We want everyone to be connected as well. At some point, you just start to feel the benefits that flow from this. And there is no stopping it. So what are you psyched about right now? What are you excited about? And here's the fun thing, you'll always see <clears throat> that when you're really, really, really in your excitement, in your flow, in your passion, in that space, and I'll explain later how this all ties into manifesting your reality, but this is the basis, this is the most important part of it. When you are tapped into yourself, literally <clears throat> tapped into all of yourself, when you're turned on, when you're riding that wave of resonance or excitement or joy, you are not of this world in the sense that you're not physically focused, you're not physically based, you're not equating reality as we would call reality, like physical circumstantial reality. You're not really seeing that. You're not really equating that with who you are, what you want to be expressing, how you want to express that, how you want to experience yourself. All of that is free from the room that we're in at this point, the checks you need to pay, the stuff that needs to get done. Your flow is independent, not separate, but independent from reality. And what you'll see is that when you're tapped in, you don't see reality. And when you're not tapped in, you see reality. And by reality, I don't mean the truth of all that is. By reality, I just mean very mundanely everyday life, circumstances. Right now, the word reality refers to your circumstances. You don't see circumstances when you're in your flow. When you're in your highest state of flow, you don't see circumstances. You only taste your own excitement, your own joy, your own peace, your own bliss, your own satisfaction, your own overwhelming abundance. You're tapped in. That is your reality. There is no circumstances doesn't mean you cannot appropriately respond to circumstances, but it takes up a minimal portion of your consciousness. The majority of your consciousness is free, is non-physical in that sense, non-physically based. It's in the realm of state of being, in the realm of, in a sense, thoughts or concepts, in the realm of ideas, like abstract movement, movement of the mental body. It is on the level of joy, bliss, energy. Who has noticed that when they are tapped in to this, when they are turned on, when they are in their flow of being psyched, that they are not actually seeing circumstances? Have you noticed that? Just raise your hand if you have. In a sense, it could be all the same to you. It could be taken away from you. It could not be taken away from you. And this is where it becomes different from the personality structure being disembodied or disconnected, trying to manifest this reality as a separate entity. The difference between that and being turned on is that things can be taken away from you or not. It's all the same because you're not focused in on the level, on the realm of circumstances. Or if you are, it's just to notice, just to make observations. Just as a mirror that you peek in briefly to, oh, that's interesting reflection. Mm, how does that fit into my flow or not? How does that add to my expansion, to my wisdom, to my clarity, to my love, to my passion? And how can I add my passion to whatever is around me? Not by getting it out of me and placing it over there, but by remaining in my own non-physically focused state of energy. Does this make sense so far? The difference between being circumstantially focused into the things and the circumstances and the people and everything that seems to dictate your life. And you can also automatically feel that sense of being a victim of life, which again is being separate, 
which again is being not plugged in. Therefore, to be attentive to reality, which is what we're all teaching each other, and not you guys, but you know everyone else, is to be separate. We are constantly reinforcing, don't tap into your joy. Don't tap into your well of abundance. Don't tap into your joy and creativity and bliss. Because it's selfish. It separates you from everyone else. But the opposite is true. Can you see that? When you don't do that, you're separating yourself. You feel like you're a victim. You're focused 99.9% .9 on your circumstances. That's where you derive your sense of identity from. And you can only do that if there's two things. In your joy, there's only one thing. There's only being. There's only beingness. Your attention turns from duality in that sense to oneness, to presence, to beingness. From things and doing to being. Doesn't mean you're not doing, doesn't mean you're not expressing, but it happens as a natural side effect of a working or being conscious to the level of being, which is one. There's only one beingness, only one being. So when you're tapped in to yourself, when you're tuned into what excites you, what you wish to create, whatever that may be, and believe me, you wish to create something, otherwise you would not be here. It can be very abstract, it can be very abnormal, it can be very unconventional. It may not seem to have any form, any shape. It may not seem to be obvious. It may not seem to have a label given by society. It may not be being a lawyer, being a doctor. It may be something very new, something very abstract, something very undefined. Nevertheless, you are here to constantly co-create. If not, again, you would simply drop dead or your body would. So you're here because you're here to create, you're here to expand, you're here to experience. And the only way to effectively do that is to tune into yourself, to be tapped in, to being psyched, to be free, to be detached from the circumstances so that you can get to know that space, free from circumstances, free from the circumstantial focus. Again, does that make sense so far? Try to get a real feel for that, because that's the most usable thing, the most practicable, the most practical thing is for you to right now tune into the back and forth of circumstance focus, which instantly creates the separation victimization state, or the beingness focus, which instantly gets you tuned into something that excites you, something that is flowing, something that is juicy, something that is beautiful, something that is divine, something that is abundant something that is tuned in, tapped in. Right? No? Yes? Can you sense the difference? It's an energetic difference. It's a state of being difference. It's a focus Difference, a difference in the focus of consciousness. Where is your focal point? Is your focal point out there, then who are you? You are a subject, you are a victim, you are an observer of reality. Reality, therefore, being real. Whereas if you're tuned into being and turned away from the focus of circumstance, the circumstantial focus, what is left? If you let the emptiness, which is really all it is, the empty mirror, the smoke and mirrors of appearances, if you just let them be themselves for a moment. Let them be the emptiness that they are. Let them be the non-substance that they are. Suddenly, boom, something happens. You expand. There is clarity of vision, once again. There is perhaps even one-pointedness of vision in certain ways. Intentionality, desire, freedom, the vision who you are, as well as the vision of just the clarity of vision itself, the clarity of seeing or being itself. Does that make sense? So you gain both the peace and the freedom and the clarity of presence, isness, consciousness. The moment you take that step away from being focused into circumstances, Instantaneously, when you just let circumstances be the empty smoke and mirrors that they are, it's like your aura can breathe again. It's like not your physical lungs, although they can follow too. It's like your energetic lungs, like 
have been underwater for so long and now they're breathing and expanding and you feel the aliveness rush through your being and your body again. You're tuned in, you're psyched, you're turned on. Why? Because you have remembered that circumstances are just mirrors, smoke and mirrors. They are not real. They are not meant to dictate reality. They are not meant to dictate these divine gods and goddesses that are all men to co-create from a place of freedom, from a place of joy, from a place of being tuned in and tapped in and receiving the benefit of this abundant joy. You are all meant to shape life energetically, vibrationally. You are not meant to take your cue from reality. Reality is designed to be absolutely neutral, willless, consciousnessless in that sense. It is meant for you to shape, but not by creating this separative focus of I am an individual inside of a reality that I can mess around with. All of it is inside of consciousness. And all of it is dictated effortlessly and outside of your ability to necessarily comprehend how or why or when. But all of it is dictated vibrationally through consciousness. All you need to do is let go of circumstantial focus. Let your energetic lungs breathe in the passion again, the life. which is the feeling of being plugged back into the motherboard of all that is, into the support, the abundant support that is everything that exists, creation itself, the one's love of air with itself. And then you're tuned in. And then from that being tuned in, instantaneously your focus shifts, your priorities shift, your fears start to fade away, empowerment arises, non-duality Clarity of vision arises. Inseparability is felt, not just thought of, not just recognized, but experienced. You are inseparable. All because you're tuned in. Again, this is very person transcendent to be tuned into your bliss, your individually unique co-creatorship meant to be bliss. To be tapped into that is to become more of all that is and not less of or separate from. Do you all feel that paradox? Yet the truth of it, that to be tapped in to what's true for you, what resonates, to be free from circumstances is actually the least selfish thing you can do. And it's the most beneficial thing to do for you as an individual portion of this co-creatorship that is everything that exists. In other words, is the slate cleared for you to feel confident that this is a proper approach for you? Does it resonate? Or do you doubt? Do you doubt the truth, perhaps, of what I just shared? Do you doubt that if you tap in to what excites you, everything will go to hell? or you will go to hell because you're enjoying yourself, right? Which is punishable by hell, no? In some circles. So do you feel free to walk your path, to be your blissful self? To be psyched? What are you psyched about today? And has that taken up more of your attention, more of your energy than the things you need to do. The house you live in, the bills you need to pay, where you need to go, when you need to be there, the appointments you have, the work you need to do. What will set you free from all that in the future, in the far distant future, or in the very near future? Hopes, fears, same thing. Or have you been truly tapped in to this endless well of abundance, free from the physicalized, circumstantial, victimized focus on out there? Have you been in here as one, as one being, inseparable from its creation, excited, only looking outward to notice certain things, learn certain things, and expand from them even further, and extend a hand wherever appropriate? Have you lived that way today? 
or not. And it's a bit of a rhetorical question because I know the answer, generally speaking. But the question is asked to motivate you, to inspire you, to shift more and more of that focus from outward to self-centered, which is really boom, all centered, connected, inseparable. Self-centered being centered on state of being, your individually unique frequency state of being. Are you tuned into that? Because that is tuned into all that is. You don't have to try to tune into all that is. You don't have to try to act in such a way that you are in alignment with all that is. You can never comprehend that from this point of view. But it's already perfectly comprehended and perfectly orchestrated by the motherboard whose function it is to be conscious of all these things at the same time. It is not your diode's light's function to be aware of all that at the same time, right now, right here on this plane of consciousness. What is your duty, your honor, your job, your excitement, your passion, your reason for being here is to be tuned into that motherboard, to derive as much energy from that as you can, to be self-centered in that way, not selfish, not egotistical, but self-centered. So that your light can start to shine so that you have the Jews you need to transcend your personality structure, so that you see that personality structures are just clothes you can wear. Whatever the circumstance seems to ask for, you can give that, or you can give whatever you feel like giving in that moment. But it's a very playful thing, it's a very empty thing. It's a very optional thing, your personality is a very optional thing. But you don't see that if you disconnect that personality at some point down the line. Because then it becomes its own thing, seemingly. This is who I am. I've had the same, similar personality for 30 years now. Only because 30 years ago, whoop, you plucked yourself out of all that is. Out of being psyched for life. Out of being focused on your state of being. On what excites you. And to trust that that can support you in whatever means or whatever ways it needs to support you. All the support you'll ever need to create your reality, to flow into your dreams, to let your dreams flow into the physicality that we call the smoke and mirrors of circumstances. All you need for that is to trust that whatever your state of being dictates as being most resonant for you right now actually has the unseen capacity that you do not possess consciously to attract all that needs to be attracted harmoniously and in alignment with every other portion of existence. Abundantly so, freely so. That is already taken care of. That is already a completely operational plane of existence. A function of existence is to know exactly when to create what and how through what means and into which parallel realities and to be visible to which points of view only and not to others. All of this is perfectly orchestrated already. You do not need to try to imitate that by coming up with a job description for yourself in this life other than be in my bliss, with integrity, be, be in my bliss, with respect to other people's free will, other creatures' free will, be in your free will, be in your choice, be in your ecstasy. Be tuned into yourself. That is your only job description. Anything you add to that will feel less than enjoyable. Why? Because it's less than effective. It's less than harmonious. It's less than tuned into all that is. It's less than intelligent. That's the only reason it feels contracting when you are running, operating on an idea that is out of alignment with everyone else, with all that is, the highest interest for all that is. When you do something out of alignment with that because of a belief that you need to try to imitate that which is already perfectly going on on the motherboard level, that's when you contract. That's when things stop flowing. It's because of a belief that is a vibration, as is everything, 
that is out of sync with the flow that comes from, in a sense, your higher self that is constantly present to your sense of being here now. There's this constant background emanation that urges you forward. And you can either be open to that, be in alignment, let that flow, or you can contract that, close the windows, close the doors, because I know best. I know I should be doing this. I ought to be doing that. I should not be doing this. I ought not to be doing that. When we think we know better, then our resonance, then our bliss. That is when we cut ourselves off, and that is when the personality structure seems to become solid, rigid, separate, painful. When all it's meant to be is just this open closet full of clothes and just wear whatever you want to wear in that moment. And don't be attached or identified with any one of them because you are not the personality structure. But that's most energetically visible to you and experiential to you. When you are actually flowing and tuned in, rather than overthinking, rather than believing in things that you have been taught by other sheep, other creatures we call humans, that don't know what they're doing, once again. So whenever you believe in things that are taught to you by things that don't know what they're talking about, then that is a recipe for disaster. <laughs> or a recipe for humanity as we know it, perhaps. So again, don't take advice, including myself, from anyone that you do not wish to end up like. Or at least take something from, something that resonates. Just don't. Honestly, if you take my advice today, you'll become more like me in your own way. But just a heads up. So if that does not appeal to you, if that does not resonate, then dismiss my words. It's a very simple mechanism. Again, follow your own resonance, not my words. Would be the same thing as letting your circumstance dictate how you feel, experience, and act. No different. Only take, or assume, or agree for that moment. Whatever frequency feels like it fits into this beautifully chandelier-like crystalline structure of your uniqueness, the unique being of you that is becoming more and more crystallized, more and more brighter, more and more enlightened from the inside out, more and more expanded and expressive and intelligent and awake and tuned into all that is, tapped into your higher passion. in order, and very simply, to tune into that. Follow your resonance. Hmm? Follow your resonance. Act on your resonance. Have faith only in what resonates. Does that make sense or is that too abstract? You can all feel when something excites you, when something feels good, when something feels expansive. Right? That's what we all chase, no? What we chase is to be plugged back in. And so when someone shares something that reminds us of being plugged back in, that can feel good. Or when a circumstance happens that represents to us abundance, which is a true thought in alignment with the actual principles of creation, we feel good. When things occur to us in our life, in our circumstances, that somehow remind our belief system of the fact that things are good, things are abundant, things are flowing, things are supported. It can be as simple as someone telling you, I'll pay you five grand every month. And you go like, ah, I feel so good. Why? Because that circumstance, which exists of nothing but smoke and mirrors, represents to you, I am supported. That is what felt good, the thought you have about that circumstance, which says, oh, this means I can be who I want to be. This means I don't have to do all these things so that 65 years from now, when I'm old and crippled and broken, I can start acting on my joy. It excites you because 
it reminds you of the potential that all is possible now, that you can start living the life of your dreams right now, that you can start to allow that creational flow which is already flowing all the time into your life. You can accept it, you can agree to it. Simply by letting it in, <gasps> simply by having an abundant thought. Suddenly your whole system opens up and your lungs start breathing again and your being starts relaxing again and pl being plugged in and you feel so excited and then that is taken away from you the next day they call actually no I changed my mind I will not be giving you 5k a month no, 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 no. and you go back in depression okay this was just a silly childhood fantasy I do need a job like everyone else for 65 years and I can only follow my joy once I'm crippled and old I'm miserable and conditioned way too far so that I, you know, I won't even know what my joy is anymore anyway. I'm meant to die that way. That is reality. Okay, let's just be content with that. Let's accept that and then read books about the now so we can at least tolerate <laughs> being miserable. How to accept what is. Just locks you into more of what is. Well, be my guest. But I am here to create. I'm here to fly, to soar, to expand, to trigger you, to push your buttons, to eject you out of your seat. <laughs> it may feel unpleasant at times. And take from it what resonates. Leave what does not. But prepare to be ejected. Because you are here. And you do resonate with this, at least to some extent. Even when you think you don't, there is something here for you. So what excites you? What excites you? Other than coming to terms with what is. What excites you? Dancing. Dancing, thank you. Great. The way to know that is to withdraw, relax for two to five seconds. Your focus on circumstance. That includes thoughts about the circumstance. Very important. Those are married together. Thoughts of the circumstance and the circumstance are married together. They're the same thing. So to relax from the thoughts regarding circumstances and to be open to the presence, the energetic state of being presence, the frequency presence that is here and now. It is here and now. Radiant, already animating you, your body, everything in your life is animated by this principle of abundant creational flow. the one through all of you as co-creators, as portions of all that is, desires to know itself. It desires to express and explore and experience itself and expand upon itself, know more about itself by acting in all these new ways it has never acted before, by relating to its own structurally possible experiences and everything is a possibly structurable, everything is a possible experience, but the ways in which you relate to that are ever fresh. That is how it's building new consciousness of itself, new consciousness, a new awareness of itself through relationship with its experiences. And the most harmonious, effective way to contribute to that all that isness expanding upon the one's creation is to be psyched, to be psyched, to be tuned into yourself, to be turned on not to be tuned into your circumstances. Be tuned into yourself. Be turned on by your state of being. You have all this presence here. You've got all this existence right here. You are existence. You are presence. You are now. And from that space, you may know and discover what turns you on. So practice that right now. Relax all your thoughts about the circumstances, about where you're at right now, about me, about the exercise, and just 
feel into the freedom that does not perceive a world. There is no world to your state of being. A world has never been witnessed, recognized, acknowledged. There is no world in state of being. There's only state of being, which is nothing but beingness or consciousness vibrating at a certain frequency. That's all this is. There has never been a world. There's never been a circumstance. So you're not letting go of anything that actually exists anyway. So let go of your circumstances. They are smoke and mirrors. They are emptiness playing tricks on you, reflecting your state of being in form. But your state of being is free from a particular type of form. It is free. It's free-flowing energy. It's free-flowing consciousness. It is consciousness vibrating at different frequencies according to its desire to most effectively express and explore more of infinity, more of the one, more of infinite unity. So feel into your state of being right here, right now, and see that when you're tuned into your state of being, you're not tuned into your circumstances. Suddenly, the bills disappear. Suddenly, your relationship disappears. Suddenly, this room disappears. Because all you see with your consciousness, your eyes may be looking at me, but what you see, what your attention is focused upon, is your state of being, your vibrational entrance point into more of yourself, your gateway, your open door. That is all you see more and more and more. And then you just peek out sometimes, A, because you're part of a civilization that still values that. And so in order to respect to some extent that interaction, that ongoing interaction, you peek out, you recognize, you acknowledge, but you remain in that sense rooted more and more and more in that non-physicalized state of being here and now. Tuned into what turns you on right now, and right now, and right now. What expands you right now? What would be the most exciting thing to do, feel into, be conscious of, acknowledge, appreciate, be grateful for? Or any other ways for you to take action on something? And by taking action, I mean even as simple as acknowledging something or resting as a certain kind of frequency that you enjoy in that moment. That is taking action on something. You're always taking action in a certain way. So consciousness taking action on itself all the time. What would excite you the most to take action on right now, to be present to right now, to acknowledge, to be grateful for, to appreciate, to amplify, to enhance, to flow into? What feels the most flowy, the most expanding? And often that scares you a little bit. Does it not? If it doesn't, you're not tuning into your truest passion. If it's like, oh yeah, that's fun, let's do that. No challenge, no catalyst, no invitation, no mirroring, just like, oh yeah, that sounds fun, let's do that. Yeah, I, yeah no, I'm excited about that. <laughs> no, really, I can see how that could be fun. When something really excites you, it scares you. Because no one will agree with you, most likely. Because those that have surrounded you are the result of your past thoughts, your past conditioning, your past frequency. So when you think of a new expanding, new state of being, vision, frequency, inspiration, <gasps> It takes you to another level of expansion, another level of understanding, another level of intelligence, sometimes unimaginable, unspeakable. How does that compute with your circumstances? Well, it doesn't. And that's where it often frightens you a little bit. It triggers you, but that's good, huh? So every time you expand, every time you ask yourself, what am I psyched about now? And usually it's a form of dropping a whole thing that you've been holding on to because of some idea of lack and this is bringing you security or whatever. And just drop that whole thing that doesn't feel good anymore. Enlightenment by elimination. Eliminate, eliminate, eliminate. Boom, 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 boom. Out of love. It is a loving attitude. It is in alignment with acceleration. And acceleration helps all that is more effectively. 
than when you think you're helping all that is. The only way you're helping all that is, is to be psyched. That will guide your way. Be psyched. Be stoked. Be excited. There is no sense in living your life if you do not wake up with some kind of conscious concept of excitement, some kind of vibrational alignment. It's okay if you have your valley experiences and it's okay if you have your negative definitions. It's okay if you have your limiting beliefs. I'm not saying you should feel excited all the time. I'm saying that there should be at least some kind of clarity in your life every single day that places the focus past the obstacles. And that is most easily done by staying in front of the obstacles, not even taking the course, which is the circumstances which do not even exist to begin with. Do not believe in the obstacle, that's the quickest way to be focused into something that is more expensive than the obstacle. Does that make sense? Because your state of being is right here. The obstacles are only ever out there. So just don't bother. Don't go out there anymore in your consciousness. Remain right here. In your creational flow, in your alignment, in your bliss, in your courage, in your psychedness. Does that make sense? Can you feel into that? It's the best way to serve infinity. It's the best way to serve all that is. Best in terms of simply most effective, most enjoyable, most all-round beneficial, less seemingly disharmonious, dysfunctional. It's all relative because it's all serving the one. It's all an experience that's creating something new. But why bother going about it that way? if you can go about it this way. And you'll feel the difference and you will not be able to go back to your own mind, basically, because that's what creates the circumstance, your own mind. It doesn't feel pleasant to be back in your own mind. At some point you don't have an own mind anymore. But it feels like you're trying to squeeze yourself into a corset. Oh yeah, I remember this. Can't breathe. Energetic corset. That's the contraction. Contraction is letting you know you are presently operating on a most frequently unconscious idea that is out of alignment with the way the universe effectively works. It's still a truth. You can still exhibit it, believe in it, express it, work from it, try to make it work, try to make it be part of creation. <laughs> but it doesn't work. It doesn't flow. It's not in alignment. And so you feel that. There's a perfect mechanism right here, right there. Your body. Ta -da! It's just meant to let you know what's up. Hey, buddy. Pay attention. You're too focused on your circumstances. Oh, that's great. Thank you. <gasps> Instant liberation. No need for psychotherapy. <laughs> Ta-da! Whoa. I actually interpreted feelings the way they were designed to be interpreted. <gasps> Contraction means you're believing in an idea that's out of alignment with the way the universe works. Expansion means you are riding the wave of the way things actually work. That's all there is to it. There's only one emotional spectrum with two ends. Bliss and depression, however you want to call it. Lack and abundance. There are no 28,000 emotions. Those are perversions. Those are ridiculous perversions of this one mechanism. The emotional body becomes more and more and used to be and is meant to be and designed to be this crystal clear energy. <sighs> this crystal clear vision of what resonates and what doesn't. That's it, end of the emotional being. That's what the emotional body is for. That's its only function. We've given it way too many jobs. It's a little burned out, a little overloaded with ideas that don't fit into your natural frequency expansive self. 
So why am I saying all this when I say the meeting is about creating your reality? It's because creating your reality is effortless. It really doesn't require you as a personality to sit down and visualize the life of your dreams, although they can totally, totally be an activator. So it has its place. But if you understand this principle, it will do all that for you. And sometimes you use your imagination and your visualization because they are non-physical and they are not focused in on what is. They are actually tuned into what is possible so that what is possible becomes what is naturally, like a downpouring stream of energy. As long as you're focused on what's next, which is actually not contradictory to the now, because that taps you into your bliss, into your joy, which taps you into the eternal now, which is inclusive of past and future. It's not a slice in between the past and the future. Just be here now, be here now, be here now. The future is here now. The past is here now. Expand that vision of acceptance. Acceptance is all that is already. You have nothing to do with that. You never had anything to do with acceptance. It's a mood point. It's a redundant practice to accept what is. It's already here. <laughs> You see? It's already here, effortlessly accepted. You have no say in that. So don't constrict yourself in trying to tolerate what is, because the practice of acceptance turns into the practice of tolerance. And to tolerate your suffering is the greatest disservice you can do to you being plugged into all that is. And being of service. And being that beautifully bright, inseparable being that you wish to be. It is this weird tolerance buildup that we have as a society to endure suffering and suffering and suffering. And it's not the endurance because everyone is able to endure endless forms of suffering, ultimately. What is baffling is that we tolerate that, is that we actually agree to that, is that we actually accept that. You know, we have to accept everything. Yes. Well, it's already accepted. Now what do you want to do with it? You want to shine? Want to hit the eject button? Go ahead, right now, hit the eject button. <laughs> Be without a roof for the rest of your days. No roof. It's like one of those Harry Potter scenes. Whenever you look up to yourself, you see nothing but infinity and stars, infinite potential, endless parallel realities, dreams, waiting to be snatched up and brought into this church that is life as we know it, reality as we know it. The more you're just focused on the people in the room, the chairs in the room, the way everything has been set up for the past 20 years, you're not going to allow this space to change. If we want this space, planet Earth, to change, we have to look up not at what is. What is is absolutely redundant. It has no information for you other than whether or not it resonates. That's it. Does it excite you? No. Move on. Expand your vision. Look up to the sky. Look up to infinite potential. Let it tune you into infinite possibilities because that is the eternal now. The eternal now does not look like tolerating suffering. The eternal now is endlessly blissful for no reason, even though it has infinite reasons to be blissful, infinity being the main one. Infinity is, by default, by nature, a blissful reflection, because it's infinite. It negates everything else, in a good way. Ta-da! It allows you to experience, perceive unity, more and more of unity, because infinity is unity. So how to create your reality is almost a redundant question, and I'm even wondering whether I'll get into it or not. How did you create being here right now? How did you create the illusion of particles making up this room? How did you do that? Do you need to know? Is it up to you? Is it part of your job description? No. Part of your job description, the only part of your job description is what excites you right now. And that contains 
all the elements of future, past, respect, integrity, etc. Does that make sense? Do you believe that? Does it resonate? Does it turn you on? Does it get you psyched? Pumped? Awake? Alive? Free? More infinite? Looking up instead of down. Stop looking down. There is no value in keep reflecting what is. Don't keep reflecting what is, or you'll get more of what is. And guess what? That's already been created and experienced. It's not really expanding upon creation that much. It still is because it's always a new relational experience. But if you keep recreating the same cycles and same patterns, seemingly same, you're just sort of like comfortably staying within, or uncomfortably, hopefully, staying within the same realm of exploration. But if you forego what is for the sake of what excites you and what turns you on and what is real and alive in your state of being, in your consciousness, directly, immediately, direct lifeline, rather than hearsay, direct lifeline to what makes you excited, to what turns you on. Now that is powerful. How will you create your reality? It will just be created. Every stone will be placed right when you're about to place your food into empty air, empty sky. Clink, clink. And at some point, you notice that that's just happening. So you don't fear it as much anymore. You know, you have faith that you're always supported. There's always support in the next step. So be in the vibrational trust that you are always supported. Who is it that needs support anyway? Who cares if you're laying in a ditch for 30 days? Who cares? It's fun, especially when it rains. It forms a little river. You can flow down it maybe even if it rains hard enough. <coughs> Who cares? Really, how important is it for you to be supported? It's this big assumption. I need to be supported. I need to make sure I have this. I need to make sure I have that. Try it. Try your worst fear voluntarily for a week. And you see that it's not that bad. And there's always a way out. So what is there to fear? Why do you even need trust that you are supported? Aren't you already? Isn't it obvious that you're supported? You're here right now. You're hearing my voice. You're thinking abstract thoughts, concepts that set you free, perhaps, if you so use them, if you so allow them to. Realizing more of your infinite nature. I mean, it's not that bad to be here. Huh? <laughs> You're pretty privileged in that sense. You must believe that you are worthy of goodness. You must believe that you are a creature of infinite worth. Otherwise, you would not hear these words. You would be digging up food somewhere with your bare hands. But no, you're here. You're perfectly comfortable now. Stop complaining, right? Right? Stop fearing the worst. What is the worst? What's the worst? What's the worst case scenario, really? Try yourself. Test it out for a week. See that you have the choice to go there if you want to. It's always there. If I ever want to lay in a ditch for a week, I can. Rest assured, it doesn't have to come by chance, you can just do it. You don't have to just wait for it to happen, you can just do that. Explore what it's like, you don't have to think about what would that be like, that'd be terrible for the rest of your life. You can just do it and find out and move on and stop fearing the worst case scenario. It's not that bad, life is not that bad. Right? We're privileged, we're really, really, really fucking privileged, okay? All of y'all. And that is not given to you and you now have to like, oh, God, am I worthy of this? No, it is given to you by your higher self because you're at this point of evolution within which you know you are a creature of infinite worth and you're waking up to that more and more, that you are inseparable from the everythingness that is the love affair of the one. And so 
You are here. You are privileged. But that's not a bad thing. It's not a score against you that you somehow have to pay for later on. It will get better and better and better and better if you let it. And it will be more healing and healing and healing if you let it. And it will cleanse your vision and reveal existence to be flawless. It will show you unity. It will show you endless abundance. And it will also relieve you from this idea of sin or unworthiness. Because at some point it's just no longer obvious. I mean, it is obvious. It's obvious that it no longer fits, that it no longer has a place, that it's just a ridiculous idea. It's like a kid approaching you with this silly idea. I'm not talking about like this beautiful imaginative world. That's all great. But just this silly idea from their limited perspective about something that occurred and they just see it completely wacky. That's you. To some extent, that is you. That is me. To some extent, that is us. To believe in lack. To believe lack could ever occur to us. It could ever exist. It has ever existed when it has never existed. It could never occur in any way, shape, or form. Yeah, but I remember this experience five years ago. I had an actual experience of lack. Well, show it to me. Anyone? Has anyone here ever experienced lack? Show it to me, and I'll show you that you haven't. And you go, oh, I never looked at it that way. Uh. Oh, that's a nice perspective. Or easy for you to say. I can't believe in that way of seeing. With all due respect. <laughs> it's so simple when you see it. And it's really cute, it's really innocent, and it's beautiful when you see, oh, I was in this line of thought. There's also this way of seeing. Wow, that actually feels so much more empowering to me. Thank you. That's great. That's awesome. Keep shifting points of view until you hit the right spot. Ooh, that feels really, really good. Let me just stay here in this frequency for a moment, in this confidence. And then when it thins itself out and it's no longer relevant, what's the next most exciting thought, experience, concept, vision, idea, way of seeing what is, not even looking at what is at all, or whatever else you're into? What is the most exciting way for your consciousness to be applied right now to a moment, to a thing, to an act, to a thought, to a no thought, to a no thing, to a no doership, to a no act, whatever you're into, whatever application, it's all still acting, whatever application of consciousness applies to you right now, resonates for you right now, be in that flow. And then the next moment, be in that flow. And feel free to rest there for a bit, let it manifest some of your reality. You take on that non-physical point of view that excites you, and you stay with it and maybe you're inspired to act in a certain way and so you act in a certain way and you may check in every once in a while because why not with how things are going in this world in, in your circumstances, how your actions are actually reflected. But really, you do that maybe 0.01% of the time. And then you just continue to create and find the bliss and the joy in your dream life to be present as the frequency state of being that is tuned into all that is, that is infinite, that is tapped into an endless well of abundance and creativity and joy. And then, whew, it's emptied out. That's a good thing. If you linger with that one, you'll enter an unnecessary valley experience. Mm. Don't linger. Always be on the move. Freely, not like, okay. Mm -hmm. Like, this excited me for a week, and now it feels empty and dead. And now all these human thoughts have accumulated around that passion this expression, and now all that I'm left with is the container, the human context, the agreements, the commitments. <laughs> Find a way with integrity to avoid them up front already, or to respectfully, skillfully free them up from those that are involved and move on to the next project, having learned from the previous project not to make any promises.
perhaps, in whatever way that applies for you. So that you can always dance on your resonance. Respect your resonance. Respect, respect your space. Respect that you are always free to move. Respect it as much as you can. Set your life up in such a way. Set your attitude up in such a way. Set your clarity, your communication up in such a way that your throat is fully open and crystallized. Crystalline. You can communicate with crystal clarity what it is you desire, why you desire it, and how things are true for you. You can open up that dialogue to someone else that is involved in that circumstance, or to a company that's involved in that circumstance, or a kid that's involved in whatever it is, whatever agreements. Surround your joy. Support your joy for a while. Have them be more and more clarified from the get-go so that as your resonance moves, there is no agreements holding you back. Does that make sense? I'm just giving a little glimpse of how I see our future working out as a collective, as a society. More and more people will understand and grok this and be free from that need of agreement, from that need of concepts, from that need of clothing everything into something when it's all free motion. So feel free to respect yourself enough and your space and your resonance and your desire to accelerate and therefore be able to assist and support so many more than if you keep yourself small. By communicating as clearly as you can to those involved or the things involved or the universe involved or yourself involved, to communicate, to show clearly, to be precise, to be clear, to be certain, to be confident, lovingly so, respectfully so, but to be confident, to respect your own freedom at all times. And you're not manipulating if you're setting up your life in such a way where that gets more and more free reign to actually accelerate and expand without id or you being blocked by any sort of idea that lingers for longer than you're comfortable with. So you find something that excites you, whether that something is an idea, a restful spot, a no idea, whatever it is. You apply your consciousness to that and it excites you, it taps you into your true nature and it gives you this creativity and this expansive intelligence. And then when it exhausts itself and it grows empty, your vision is cleared up, your consciousness, your RAM memory is cleared up to start looking for what's next. What's the next best software to put into my hardware? to apply my computer processing power to. What excites me the most right now? And as you keep doing that, my friends, as you keep doing that, well, you'll find out. But it's a good place to be. That's an understatement. Find out. Find out for yourself, if you're curious, find out. Give yourself 100% to that which excites you the most until it no longer feels true for you or real or valid or relevant. And then be very open, very instantaneously to the next best thing and the next best thing and the next most aligning thing and the next most expensive thing and the next most exciting thing and the next most ecstatic thing and the next most loving thing and the next most peaceful thing and the next most kindest thing and the next most liberating thing and the next most ecstatic thing the next most blissful thing. And it just keeps building and building and building and building and building and building until you are with the majority of your consciousness no longer focused or perceiving a world, a circumstance, an out there. There's no more out there. There's just you dancing the waves of infinite consciousness as you please. And that naturally boom, pours down into the physical denser plane of consciousness Effortlessly. And that is how you create your reality. And at the same time discover so much more of it that you're still oblivious to because of ideas that don't serve you anymore. Find support first in yourself, then perhaps in teachings like these, and then in community. and then in environment or location, and then in activities, etc. Respect your resonance enough for you to be able to 
not just dismiss all circumstances as not being relevant, but to choose which ones serve you, to surround yourself with the more and more circumstances and people and things that actually contribute to your bliss and expansion, and just respectfully say goodbye to those things and activities and places and locations and people and ideas and teachings and teachers and communities and relationships and careers and basically everything you would call being part of your human existence, your human life, be able to or give yourself the gift to whether gradually or rapidly, whatever is your makeup, whatever suits you, whatever floats your boat, but make that change. Give yourself that gift. And it will constantly support you in remembering that it's not in there. Surround yourself with circumstances that keep pointing you to the fact that they don't exist and they don't matter. Does that make sense? Things that inspire you, in other words, can be a beautiful mountain. A beautiful, inspiring mountain can remind you that you are experiencing the joy. The mountain is not transmitting that to you. You are radiating that. The mountain literally is made up of smoke and mirrors, which is unconditional love in different forms. So it is itself also joy, but on a more relative level, the mountain is not giving you joy. You are giving joy to the mountain. Does that make sense? So surround yourself with things that fit your makeup. Why not? Give yourself that gift. Manipulate your environment to that extent. Not out of neediness, but out of self-support and kindness and with integrity and respect to what you have accumulated. But also with respect enough to be able to say no or to be able to say goodbye to these things. And draw a line somewhere. Like, okay, this is what I can offer in terms of a smooth moving from this to that. And I feel I am responsible for this portion. And I absolutely loved working with you. I absolutely loved being with you. I absolutely loved this experience. And now it serves me to move on. And the rest is up to you. Give yourself that gift also at times. Does that make sense? Beautiful. So you keep moving. You keep expanding. You keep dancing. As consciousness, on consciousness, through consciousness. Not really seeing circumstances anymore. The easiest way to not see circumstances is by not pointing at them. Not looking at them. Not defining them. And you will gain the intelligence to then be able to navigate circumstances from a different space. You'll be able to view circumstances. You'll be able to observe them and act on them in certain ways. But it's no longer your identity. It's no longer you taking your cue from these circumstances. You're no longer waiting. That sums it up. Don't wait. If you're ever waiting in whatever form, in whatever way, you're having a thought that's out of alignment. That's not supporting your reality. That's not supporting the natural flow of creating your dream life, which already wants to come about. Trust me, it really does want to come about. Your dream life is not something you are responsible for. It's already there. Okay, it's right there underneath whatever you've accumulated on top of it. It's like this. This template, this form that is so pure and so perfect for you, but you've sprinkled some dust on it, bought some of those little train set houses and people and built a train track. And so all you see is the houses and the people and the trees and the trains, but you're missing the actual underlying presence of your dream life already. And it wants to burst forth. And it will. Like when you keep stuffing a volcano with debris. At some point, <gasps> the desire to break free becomes so much more powerful than the weight and the gravity and the seeming importance of the debris. That, in one fierce blow, it comes out. And that's exciting, no? So flow with it, with you. Be you. Be focused on you. What do you feel right now? Is it right here, right now, your state of being? Zoom. It's like this radiating power. If you could actually see it or feel it, it's like a crystalline. It's like this 
chandelier basically that has so many diamonds and things and colors and it just like boom, shoo. and for some it's a little more like a little more muddied perhaps but underneath and what wants to come forth is this crystallized ice palace that just <clears throat> crystallizes itself which seems contradictory right crystallized seems solid but actually the more you move the more you flow the more you are in alignment with yourself your energy field becomes more crystalline in that sense more like a crystal more <sighs> expressed more <clears throat> radiant more defined more spiky not spiky like negatively but like I don't know how to express it exactly but like an ice palace you know like, phew, powerful does that make sense <laughs> a little bit so and when you're muddied a lot when you're muddied a lot and for 20 30 years you condition yourself to be muddied a lot and to be confused and to be unclear and accumulate all these ideas that don't belong to your ice palace then the ice sort of starts melting and blah, this castle looks like a blob you can't even find a door you don't even know it's your home but when you start acting on your excitement again, acting on your state of being, not your state of circumstance, you realize circumstances don't ever matter. It starts to grow and expand and crystallize and make itself precise in all of its multiple angles. You can also imagine it as a thousand petaled lotus in a sense, or a billion petaled lotus like sometimes the Indians portray the crown chakra. It's kind of like that. It holds the sum of all of your vibrations. So it's like, whew. and the more you crystallize all that crystalline align, the more you free up and wake up and understand or not understand, doesn't really matter. But the more you are in your joy and your bliss, the more all that aids in this being, this expression that is like a chandelier, very much like a chandelier. And that's how you'll sense yourself, and that's how you'll see other people. In your own way, whatever way that comes to you. But you start to feel the vibrancy, the aliveness, the uniqueness of each being. The fact that they hold their thousand petaled lotus, or their crystalline ice pastel, or however you want to imagine this powerful present energy field. I was going to say something, but I forgot. Anyway, are you psyched? Are you happy? Are you psyched? Are you excited about being alive? Are you excited about exploring more of your state of being and less of your circumstances? Yes. Good. Isn't it exciting? It's so simple. It's so simple. Life is so simple. Spirituality is so simple. Self-realization is so simple. Self-actualization is so simple. So simple. More of your state of being and less of your circumstances. Until there is only state of being and circumstances are an enjoyable mirror that only reflect the lightness and the clarity of your own crystalline heart. Infinity in form, radiant, beautiful, divine, godlike, beautiful, radiant, Whew. precise and yet infinitely open, certain and yet without as insistence of any kind, confident, but not as an antidote, just because you exist and because. It is obvious that you are, and because it is obvious that you are a fountain of infinite worth. And that infinity is flowing through you, animating you, and that you are infinity, expressing yourself. Right? Yes. Can I get an amen? 
Yeah. <laughs> hmm. You are so perfect. So perfect. So perfect already as you are. Not lesser than you'll be at some point. Just a little unclear on certain points, but that's all right. Naturally perfect, regardless already. You can already rest in that perfection, in that sense of infinite worth, of infinite love. Doesn't mean I will withhold helpful, valuable information as to how to express that more enjoyably for yourself. Because you can and you want to. That's why you're here. That's why I'm here. So go forth and crystallize your life by letting it flow, by being more interested in your state of being every second of every day than you are in your circumstances which are so empty and meaningless and matterless and they don't create anything. They're just a mirror. Stop taking the reflection of your state of being to be the indicator of how you should now move about life. If you're frowning in the mirror reflection, does that mean you should keep frowning? What if you just smile? The reflection will change as well. Life will change as you change. Life will move as you move. Life will expand as you expand. Things you couldn't even dream of in terms of knowing yourself in certain ways. They become available, they become crystal clear to you at some point, naturally, effortlessly, when it's relevant for you. Crystal clear, weird, beautiful, amazing, expensive, unlike anything you've ever imagined yourself to be. It's a thrill ride, it's, it's an adventure, it's a mystery, a mysterious, never-ending expansion. Whoever you think you are, you're not. You really are not. Not even close. Whatever your highest imagination is of what you truly, really, 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 really are, you're not even close. And that should be a comforting thought. Because that means there is no end and there's no reason to not start it right now. Simply by opening up to your joy, to your state of being, to your clarity, to your here and now desire. All of these things will pour into your knowledge, into your understanding, into your consciousness more and more and more and more and more and more. All you need is the desire. If you don't have the desire, that's absolutely fine. You can just rest as you are. and know that you're perfect. And at some point it may spark that desire for infinite, endless seeking. Don't ever stop seeking, please. Because the one doesn't even stop seeking, why would you? Don't ever stop seeking, okay? Don't ever stop discovering. Don't ever stop exploring. There is no end. There is no enlightenment. If you've reached enlightenment, Whatever. Boring. Keep on moving. Keep on seeking. Keep on expanding. Infinity is infinite and so is your search. Why would you ever stop except out of fear for losing what you have? Why would you ever stop except out of fear? And you are not fearful creatures because you remember you can execute your worst case scenario and see that it's fine. Funny even. Oh really? Did I fear this for 20 years? Stop doing what I love to be doing? Not be myself? Because I could be lying in a ditch for a week? I had the most amazing interactions with people. I was fed, not as much perhaps, but I was fed. I experienced hunger, I experienced hunger transcendence. I experience what it's like to not be hungry anymore, or to, when I am hungry, to still feel overflowing satisfaction. 
I learned all these gorgeous things from my worst case scenario. You are not frightful creatures, not anymore. None of you is afraid. None of you is afraid of the eject button. Right? Why would you be? It's not like you can reach a roof or a wall to slam into. There's no end, there's no mistake, there's no wrong turn, there's no structure, there's only space. Why be afraid of space? Why be afraid of endless abundant space? There's nowhere else you could potentially end up. I'm afraid I'm going to hit a wall. Well, guess what? It's made of space. <clears throat> We're all space. So, are there any questions? Insecurities, doubts, statements, powerful expressions of living your life and having made that choice right now, right here, perhaps in this meeting. Having transcended your fears, your limitation, your assumption of whatever it is. And you're in the flow, you're in the acceleration, you're in the stream leading ever closer to infinity, even though you cannot get closer or farther away, because it's infinity. Thank you, my friend. I just figure, I just figure I'll jump right in again. Um, I've had a long, exhausting day, which is probably good because my brain is barely working here, so I feel like I'm That's absorbing good. it without thinking about it too Excellent. much. Excellent, yes. Um, what you were speaking about in terms of following your passion or your bliss, like what flashed while you were saying that was how many times I've followed something that was exciting. I've been to a workshop and signed up for the next class or whatever it was, and then lost interest. Mm -hmm. And you mentioned something about kind of the yes. the valley. It's like I lose interest, and then there's a whole there's been a whole swarm of judgments that come up. Oh, I should have followed through. What's wrong with me? All of that. And uh, you know what following through looks like when you hit hit a valley experience? No, it's not to keep pushing what you're doing when it no longer feels like it's alive. It is to have faith while you're dipping. Okay. That is to continue. I was initially going to say to you when you said, so I've done that, right? Like follow my joy, sign up for this, do that. And then I was going to say, and then you stopped. Yep. And then you said, and then a judgment comes up that says, and then I stopped. But mm, stopping, can we turn this down a little bit? Stopping looks like judgment, not like stopping the activity or stopping signing up or stopping or not following through with your course. Following through on your resonance means that you're not judging yourself when it empties itself out, when it's no longer relevant for you. That yes. is following through, to, have yeah. to keep the faith. <laughs> Isn't it? And then, the f then there's the flow into the next one. Yes. Even if it is a whole bunch of what could be judged as incompletions or failures or whatever it's like oh okay i'm done with that now this yes right okay. exactly totally keep on flowing yeah never stop in that sense and when you judge yourself you tend to stop yeah the judgment itself is a stagnation it's the looking to experiences to take your cue from you're looking to circumstances to take your cue from how you should be experiencing and deciding upon yourself right now right and and then <clears throat> so what I'm aware of now, and, and this has been in the past year, really getting tuned into the flow of the energy. So it's rather than looking at the circumstances, looking at the energy, it's like, oh, okay, it's over here now. Mm -hmm. But it's looking at the energy independent of whatever's going on in terms of the course I'm in or no longer in or whatever. Does that sound accurate? I didn't, I didn't hear what you said. Follow, the, so for me, to, to continue <clears throat> is to follow the energy. What excites you? 
um, dance. Apply, apply it right now. Yeah. There's no way to secure your future resonance right now. Okay. Are you looking for circumstances, past experiences of following your resonance, not following your resonance? Because that's a circumstance at this point. Right. What is real and alive here right now? Who are you right now? Feel your state of being. Move away from the focus on circumstance. Yeah. And let this indicate your clarity, your questions, and your actions. Okay. Does this make sense? Yeah. And do that over and over again until it's more and more automatic. We're not automatic like, oh, okay. You know, conditioned automatic. Automatic in terms of that is all you do because that is all that makes sense to you at that point. Because that's all that gives you juice. As soon as you step out of that, you start severely damaging yourself. Not really, but you start severely, uh, uh, even an ounce or an inch away from this state of being after a while, once you get used to it and once you know this is all you want to be doing and you accelerate and accelerate and expand and expand and faster and faster, faster and faster and faster and faster. Then when you step out from that room, you hurt yourself that much more. You feel it that much more. Yeah. Does it make sense? Yes. Okay. Completely. Thank you. So more and more, just make it your own, make it true for you and it will be easier to stay in that flow and things will completely turn around, or if they've already turned around in your life, they will continue to expand and accelerate. Is yeah. that enough? Does it suffice? Yes, I, I get that. And I get that to more talk is going to drag me back down. Can you see that right now in this moment? Yes. Perfect. So you're, uh, even as something as simple as the process of dialogue here right now, you can apply the same thing. Uh, if I go into the circumstantial focus, mm, I don't actually need that conversation. I don't actually need to ask that question and have it answered in a certain way. Right. I can actually have it answered by answering myself right here, right now. State of being, no circumstances. State of being, not circumstances. State of being, more and more and more. You can only ever practice now. Oftentimes people ask me, but what about when I leave retreat? What about it? It doesn't exist. <laughs> Just continue doing the same thing. And the same acceleration will show up. Does that make sense? Yeah, I get that. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate you being up here. Not to discourage you from questions right now, but anything you want to share? Statement? Statement to life, perhaps? Statement to all that is and everything that's looking at you right now? Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, and those thank yous. Any other statements? Perhaps here as a stream of convictions coming through you? Anything you want to state to yourself, any new crystallization that's bursted out of the, into the, Clarity of being. Yes. Yes. Um, no, wait. You go sit here. <laughs> and I want clear statement after clear statement after clear statement yes. of what you Why, are telling of course, yourself right now. Of course. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> Why, certainly. Okay. No stories. Um, yes. Um, no stories. It's no hard, story. Huh? It's hard. It has to do with I, what I want to It has create. nothing to do with anything. Statements. I'm creating. No, it has no. Wait, no, right okay. here. Okay. What, what is alive for you right now? Practice right now. Be right here, right now. What is your state of being? Ex describe it. Describe beingness. Describe hereness. S make that statement to here and now. Music. Mute. Thank you. What else? Whatever comes. Whatever doesn't come, silence is good too, but whatever statements come. Here and now. No stories, no background, no history, no because of this, no means to an end. No end. Here. What is alive right now? Make that statement vibrationally. Right now. What I choose I'm f will be because I choose it. Perfect. Beautiful. And uh, what else do you see right now by looking at your state of being? What do you notice? 
What is alive? My heart's desire is to do this one thing in now. Is to do this one thing, and I've always. Uh, okay, wait a minute. I don't want to get into the past, right? <laughs> and um, and I'm choosing to be that and do that. Thank you. Yeah. Do you see how difficult and effortless it is to be here now? Like really be here now, not yeah. tolerating your circumstances. Yes, but yes, But actually yes. be free from them altogether by being here now, all the time, on point, right here, right now. Crystal clear yeah. statements, vibrational yes, presence. Yes, yes, Beautiful. Get the hang of that. Yes, yes, thank you, thank you. Thank it's you. tremendous. It is tremendous, yeah, it is yeah, endless, it yeah, is infinite. Yeah. It is a gateway. Yes, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Thank you. <laughs> right on. Any other statements? Yes, don't try though. Just do it. Tonight I have a feeling I will not do anything wrong. Beautiful. You, when you tune into yourself, you feel like you wouldn't do anything wrong. Yeah. That's so gorgeous. Thank you. Can everyone take that in for a moment in their own lives? Because we all believe that if we follow our joy, we'll somehow be reckless, we'll somehow be arrogant, we'll somehow be destructive. Tune into the infinite goodness of your own heart and have confidence that no matter how you act from alignment, from resonance, no matter what shows up for you, you will always act to the best of your ability in alignment with love light. Thank you so much. And um, I feel so good to sit here. Good. And uh, I have freedom to look at you. Mm. And... And... Just wait. Mm -hmm. Not waiting, it's like... Uh, um, <laughs> it's like... Um, <laughs> I don't know what's this. But there is no limitation at all. Mm. And yes, the cir circumstance is not existing. We are creating and uh, I'm inviting more and more your radiance and me that uh, we are resonating now. <laughs> Thank you. And tomorrow I'm going to meet a guy. Right. <laughs> 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 Can I give you a hug? <laughs> I think I'm going to have 10 day retreats purely like this, just like that. <laughs> No questions, just statement. Anyone else? Sometimes it's a far more powerful way to actually transcend all your limiting ideas, is to simply emphasize all these true qualities of existence. Just keep emphasizing, keep amplifying them back and forth, whether it's with a partner, in a group, or by yourself, to life, with the universe, your own creation. Just amplify what you wish to highlight out of existence and it will <laughs> align you and plug you back into that source energy. Whew. <laughs> Looks like a yes. The sky says a no. <laughs> hmm. 
That's great. Just hold the button for about a second until the green light comes on. And that's all there is to it. Everything else is the same. Just speak. I quit my job. Congratulations. I appreciate that. Tomorrow's the last day. Okay. Enjoy it while you can. I... It's over only because it doesn't feel good anymore. Mm. And I don't wake up happy. Mm. And... I know I'm going to be happy tomorrow morning. And that's all I know. Mm. And I don't know. Empty canvas. I don't, yeah, I don't. I know it makes me, f some things that make me feel really happy and I'm going to do them, but I don't yes. know where money's going to come from and I don't care. That's awesome. Yes. <laughs> Thank you so much. Yes. I've been waiting a long time not to care and yeah. not to be afraid or do anything that hurts ever again mm. because I'm afraid of fucking money. Yes. I'm so tired of that. Good. It's over. Good. Make a I'm statement so to happy. money. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Totally. Yep. Totally. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, it's fucking great. It's fucking great. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> it's awesome. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. Thank you for that gift to all that is. To free yourself up like that. Mm. Yeah. And to trust. Yeah. Or not even care. Just no. sort of the highest form of trust. Pretty. Pretty cool. Yeah. You yeah. kind of only need trust if you care about the outcome. Yeah. So you know, I care. Well, yeah, I'll you trust. Do. Yeah, you do. I'll have trust. Yeah. yeah. When you don't care, is faith is natural. I know. It doesn't it's just really abundant energy. It's just yeah. freedom. Yeah. And the alignment is always on. That's the only thing that feels good. Yes. Always on. Yes. Always thank on. you. It's always the oh only thing that feels good ever. Yes. Yeah. For every tiny little moment. Yes. Yeah. And it feels so hot to not to like bring up all the thoughts that go against that uh -huh. and go like, I, you know, no. I'm untouchable. You know, I'm un I'm, yeah. no. I've been there, done yeah, that. I don't on. like you anymore. Just come more and more. What are they? Be yeah. on your way. Beautiful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And just to choose it. To choose this unknown over and over Absolutely. and over again feels so fucking good and so yes. scary. Yes. That fear, that fear, excitement, fear, excitement. I don't know the difference anymore. I don't know what the word is anymore. There's it's a certain thing. kind of energy and I love it. Yeah. And if I don't feel that fear, if I don't slash excitement or whatever mm -hmm. that energy is, like life's not why? Why would I wake up in the morning? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Fabulous. So, I came here to uh, hear you tell me what I'm already telling myself Excellent. again. Feels really good. Yeah. Awesome. Thank, Thank you. you so much. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> Yay! <laughs> yes. tomorrow and today. Thank you. I'm excited. Anyone want to top that? <laughs> Off to a good start. <laughs> okay. Yes. I have a job and I'm climbing up a mountain toward a beautiful, regenerative, integrative society that I'm building. Beautiful. And I invite everyone here to be a part well, thank of you. this. And, and I feel like every day when I go to work, it's this wonderful challenge. It's like every day is a step, and I feel the burning in my legs, but I love it. Beautiful. Thank you. Why do you love it? Because I know I'm getting closer. Awesome. Yeah. Because you know who you are, no? Yeah. What's true? But I enjoy it. Beautiful. That's the most important part. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Almost. Now. Almost. Now. Oh. Yep. Okay. So I just want to say that this morning and uh, whatever, I saw this on YouTube 
there was this, um, or on Facebook or YouTube, it's this little goat named Jerry, and um, it says like Jerry's different than his herd, or, <laughs> and that's, I mean, I don't know exactly, but you can find it, and I mean, that's just I wanted to share, because when I watch that, it's, there's so much joy, because Jerry is like jumping around, and yes. he knocks another little goat, and he jumps around and does circles around, yes. <laughs> and all the other goats are just like doing their little goat thing. Mm. And Jerry's jumping up around, yeah. and, <laughs> and it just brings me a lot of joy. That's great. Look up, look up. I think the other goat's name, like maybe parallel self to that other goat, yeah, is uh, Buttercup. Buttermilk. Butter what? Buttermilk. Buttermilk. So there's buttermilk and Jerry. <laughs> okay, buttermilk. Yeah, look it up. It's awesome. So what's true for you right now, right here, state of being? <laughs> Just the joy. I feel a lot of joy. With you feel goats. a lot of joy right I now. I actually feel a lot of joy with goats. Yes, How about right, right now. Oh, yes, beautiful. Yes, right here. Good. But I don't actually. I'm. I'm. I'm not so hyper. I don't think like Jerry. But but Jerry gives me a lot of joy. You'd be surprised. <laughs> if you take advice from Jerry, you'll end up like him. Heads up. Yeah. Me. <laughs> yeah. And what's real for you now, too? Once uh, again, well, what is your statement right now to yourself, vibrationally? Uh, joy. Good. Thank you. Yeah. Perfect. Beautiful. Thank you. Any final statement? I hear yours, though. I hear all of you, so that's good. I hear your statements. Thank you for your statement. Thank you for being your whew, crystallized ice castle palace. Why not? Hmm? This is your playground because it is only smoke and mirrors and state of being takes care of everything. State of being takes care of everything, including, yes, including that one thing that you still have to do or that one payment you still got to come. Including that, even that is included in your state of beings. Intelligence, it's innate supervising intelligence, which you may or may not have access to to certain degrees. But that's where the faith thing comes in. I have faith that my state of being will support me. The here and now. Boom. I can dream, I can expand, I can imagine, I can be here now in the non-physical attendance of my own beingness. Not circumstance that will naturally trickle into the world. Thank you so much. Appreciate you all being here. <laughs>